Coming up on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan heads to Antarctica at the bottom of the earth to explore the incredible wilderness and marine life of this frozen continent. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Antarctica, the frozen continent. Its hostile conditions and exotic marine life are legendary. For years I've yearned to travel to the bottom of the earth to see this magnificent frozen world for myself. And finally, I've done it. Getting from the United States all the way to Antarctica at the bottom of the earth takes nearly a week. And it starts with a flight to Ushuaia, Argentina, at the tip of Tierra del Fuego. Often called the Gateway to Antarctica, Ushuaia is a beautiful little coastal city in Patagonia at the base of a large mountain range. Many of the ships departing for Antarctica use Ushuaia as their port. Ushuaia is surrounded by a large national park. Rugged, craggy mountains tower above Ushuaia. They're beautiful, but of course, I'm more interested in the underwater scenery. So, I'm spending a day in Ushuaia to do a couple dives in the Beagle Channel. The Beagle Channel is a long, narrow passage of water protected by land on both sides. Well, we're finally gonna go diving in Ushuaia, and I'm really excited to try to see something that they're famous for. You mostly see it in the restaurants downtown, but I want to see it alive, the giant king crab. Captain Carlos from Ushuaia Divers unties the boat from the dock and we're on our way under a beautiful blue sky. It's summer here in the Southern Hemisphere, and even though Ushuaia is very far south, the air temperature regularly makes it into the 60 degree range, sometimes even the 70s. The water temperature is more like 45 degrees, about what I'm used to diving at home in New England. That means I'll be wearing my dry suit. Time to get ready. It keeps the water out with an airtight zipper like the one on a space suit. Unfortunately, the dry suit is quite buoyant from all the air inside, so I have to wear a lot of weight to submerge. My gear is cumbersome and heavy, but that's the price you pay to dive in cold water. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Let's go check it out! That's a good one. Underwater, the Beagle Channel is beautiful, filled with huge kelp forests stretching towards the surface. This kelp is a kind of fast-growing algae that can grow several feet in length every day. Swimming through the kelp is really fun. I feel like Indiana Jones exploring a wild jungle. The kelp can grow tall without a strong tree trunk because it floats thanks to these little air pockets at the base of each leaf. The kelp is so thick, it blocks out the sun. As I look around the bottom, I see there are lots of other things growing here, like a variety of sponges encrusting this rock outcropping. But clearly, the Beagle Channel's most impressive animals are the crabs. Everywhere I look, crabs jump out of my way as I approach. Most of them are these little red crabs with a body about the size of a quarter. But 
but there are also decorator crabs covered in camouflage, apparently willing to hunt the smaller crabs. And another crab climbing the kelp to safety. But at last I find what I came for, the crab that rules this patch of ocean, the king crab. Although they get much bigger than this, even this small one's quite a handful. After I put it down, the crab takes off through the seaweed on the bottom. Finally settling back to pose for my camera again. At the end of my dive, I surface from the land of the crabs and we enjoy a surface interval on a small island in the channel. The views of the surrounding area are beautiful. Patagonia is just gorgeous. As much as I've enjoyed Ushuaia, the following morning finds me rolling my gear down the dock for my departure to Antarctica. My home away from home, the Alexei Marashev, a 210-foot-long Russian research vessel with an ice-strengthened hull. I meet the staff of the ship, who luckily for me speak English quite well, and then it's time to board. I'll have plenty of time to put my gear together on the long run to Antarctica. A little later, they untie us from the dock, and it's time to embark on the trip of a lifetime. On our way down the Beagle Channel to open water, we pass a small rock island covered in South American sea lions. And then we pass the famous Beagle Channel Lighthouse. After leaving the Beagle Channel, we round Cape Horn into the Drake Passage and make our way more than 600 miles south until we reach the protection afforded by the end of the Antarctic Peninsula. Until then, we're at the mercy of some of the most violent and unpredictable seas in the world. From the bridge, the first officer drives the ship with a confidence that comes from many years of making this journey. Our progress is charted on a map by a GPS. So far, the weather has been mild and the seas calm. The Drake Passage is considered the roughest section of water in the world. And boy, did we get lucky today. Later, the fog closes in, but the sea remains calm. I have almost three days of this until we get there. Even my tiny cabin isn't too uncomfortable for a nap. The next day, the sun is out, but we still aren't there. You know, two and a half days is a long time to be sitting on a ship with nothing to do. But when we get to Antarctica, it's gonna be worth it. With yet another day to go, I'm running out of things to do. last, land appears in the distance. We made it to Antarctica. The ship is covered in a fresh layer of snow, but the sun is trying to burn through the clouds. 
Icebergs float by. I can hardly believe my eyes. I'm actually here. And we don't waste any time. Our dive team starts suiting up for our first dive to explore the underwater world of Antarctica. Of course, I'm using my dry suit again, but this time, instead of 45 degree water, I'm expecting 30 degree water. Our Zodiac goes over the side, and we're off with our dive master, Jonas, driving the boat. I'm really excited. I can't wait to get below the surface and start exploring. But first, I need my warmest dive gloves. It's very interesting to do anything when you have gigantic, fat, cold water mitts on. <laughs> Just putting on your dive computer takes about 10 minutes. All right. <sighs> I'm bundled up with my heaviest undergarments. I have so much insulation, I can barely move. Well, I'm a long way from the Caribbean. I came all the way to Antarctica to go diving, and I guess I should have expected that there was gonna be ice in the water. I'm assuming that means it's gonna be pretty cold. I'll let you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a little chilly. <laughs> oh baby. I'm floating in an ocean filled with icebergs drifting by. This water is below freezing. That's possible because it's salt water. This is fresh water, so the ice is frozen floating in it. This water is so cold that if you fell into this water without a dry suit on, you could be dead in five minutes. And that begs the question, what could possibly live in such cold water? Well, let's go check it out. <sighs> My first glimpse of the underwater terrain reveals mostly just some seaweed on the bottom, flowing gently in the current. But a closer look reveals a community of bottom-dwelling invertebrates, including vast armies of limpets, snail-like animals with cone-shaped shells. They eat the algae on the rocks. A bright red sea star hunts down limpets for lunch. Nearby, anemones wait for prey, their stinging tentacles armed and ready for an unwary fish. A sea cucumber uses feathery branching arms to grab plankton out of the water to eat. But then I look up from the bottom and something catches my eye. It's a Gen 2 penguin swimming around with the grace of a dolphin and the speed of a torpedo. These birds might not be able to fly, but underwater they sure can swim. Their wings are adapted for providing underwater propulsion, and few animals in the ocean can swim with such grace and speed as a penguin. In the limited visibility, they're hard to film because I never know from which direction they'll swim. Just above the water on the beach, thousands of gentoos are warming up in the sun. A gentoo penguin is easy to identify because of its bright red beak. Many of these gentoos are barely more than chicks, waiting patiently for their downy baby feathers to fall off. These poofy feathers keep them warm when they're little, but they're not good for swimming. I watch a group of young penguins practicing their swimming technique in a small tide pool.
The tide pool offers protection from the open ocean, and it's a nice shallow spot to try swimming and hunting. Unfortunately, there's nothing here to eat, so foraging for food doesn't produce a meal. As the birds get older and their adult feathers grow in, they start gathering down by the ocean. Soon they take short hops into the freezing water to hunt in the shallows for krill and small invertebrates. It doesn't take long before they learn to swim like experts and take off to hunt together in groups. on the move porpoise in and out of the water like dolphins. But then they can hop right back up on land like no dolphin I've ever seen. Who needs to fly when you can swim like this? Soon we head back to the ship and pull anchor to move a few hours south. We're making our way towards the polar circle and passing some incredible scenery on the way. The next day, back in the Zodiacs, we head towards a shipwreck. The Governor was a whaling ship that caught fire in 1916, so the captain ran it aground to save the crew. I drop into the water to explore the southernmost shipwreck of my life. Although the bow is out of the water, the stern lies over 70 feet below. It's a long swim down the side of the hull to get to the stern. The hull is covered in patches of beautiful yellow finger sponges. I didn't realize that sponges like this could be found in such cold water. Looking closer at the sponges, I discover an Antarctic blenny resting there. Fish survive in this water because they have antifreeze in their blood that keeps it from freezing even when the water is below 32 degrees. Suddenly, a huge shape catches my eye. It's the biggest jelly I've ever seen in my life, swimming through the water with tentacles hanging down more than 50 feet. I swim over to investigate this massive animal, and the bell of the jelly is more than two feet across. As I rise towards the surface at the end of my dive, I encounter a huge wall of ice. It's an iceberg that drifted into the bay. The wall of the iceberg is covered in dimples like the ones on a golf ball. This pattern forms as the iceberg melts. Thousands of tiny bubbles are released from the melting ice as well, making the water near the iceberg look like a fizzy drink. The iceberg only rises a few feet above the surface, but it's more than 30 feet deep. When you see an iceberg floating by, there's not that much above water sometimes, but that's because more than 90% of an iceberg is actually underwater. If I flip it over, you can see just how much ice there is. That's why icebergs are really dangerous to ships, because you can't see the part that's hidden underwater. Fun with ice. 
get my arm under it. Okay. Getting the gear out of the water and into the Zodiac can be quite a challenge because of all the weight I have to carry. Heading back to the ship, we have a little time to unwind while we again change locations heading even further south. We pass through the Lemaire Channel, filled with floating chunks of ice. I can hear them bouncing off the bow, and I'm glad that this ship has an ice-strengthened hull. The next morning, we're at it again, launching the Zodiacs over the side and preparing for another adventure. I carry my camera down to the boat, and we're off. Today, we're hunting quietly for a very special animal. Jordi, Jordi, this is Jonas. And sure enough, we found them. Leopard seals sleeping on an iceberg. These animals, which reach 12 feet long, are the apex predators of the Antarctic. There are no sharks in the waters of Antarctica, but these seals fill that niche in the food chain. Yeah, cool. Soon, the leopard seals wake from their nap and come over to investigate us. They've been known to bite and deflate zodiacs when they're being territorial. We watch carefully for a few minutes before we drop into the water with this animal. Leopard seals are big, aggressive, and have sharp teeth. But this one doesn't look aggressive at all. I must admit, I'm a little apprehensive as I prepare to roll into the water, but I'm also excited. I've wanted to film a leopard seal for a long time. The seal makes a few passes to check me out, but he seems a lot more curious than aggressive. I don't follow the seal at all, but hold my ground and keep the camera rolling. I let him come to me. Divers are not very common down here. This leopard seal has probably never seen a diver or a video camera before. Either he sees his reflection in the lens, or he's looking for a career in show business. Either way, this animal sure doesn't seem to mind my presence. The leopard seal is so curious that he stays around for more than an hour. I even have enough time to go get my still camera and take a few pictures. Look how big he is compared to me. It's a good thing he's in a good mood. Although leopard seals can hold their breath for an hour while diving, this one, lounging with me near the surface, regularly pops his nose above water for a breath. That was such a great dive with that leopard seal! Man, it was so friendly, it stayed with me for over an hour! But I've been in this water for so long, my face is frozen. With the circulation returning to my face, we head back to the ship, while I think of all the great things I saw in Antarctica, from the towering walls of a tremendous iceberg, to a gigantic jelly. I saw incredible underwater acrobatics. and astonishingly beautiful scenery. Penguins nesting among the ancient bones of whales.
and humpbacks feeding in some of the most beautiful bays I've ever seen. From the surprising color of the invertebrates living in the freezing water to the stark beauty of the frozen landscape, Antarctica is spectacular to behold. Soon, we must turn north for our long journey back to Ushuaia. As the sun sets on the passing ice, I have plenty of time to reminisce about my adventures. As we leave the protection of the Antarctic Peninsula, we discover the Drake Passage is not as kind as it was on the way down. But for that incredible hour I spent with a curious leopard seal, it's worth it. Antarctica might be cold, and the diving is hard work, but I'll never forget this magical place way down at the bottom of the blue world.